Welcome to the Sabbath of the Lord, and uh, we appreciate uh, for His grace upon our lives to have uh, another opportunity of sharing in His Word. And uh, I'm praying that uh, His blessings may be upon us as we continue with uh, uh, our messages, and that uh, all that uh, He will want us to learn, He will uh, uh, accomplish. And that what he has intended us to change in our lives by his power and by his grace, uh, we, we shall be able uh, to learn of him and ask of his strength uh, that uh, he may enable us to do that which is his perfect uh, will. Um, we are going through the series uh, of... Uh, 1888 and uh, I'm praying that uh, as we go through this lesson we may be renewed and uh, our minds may be vivified once again to walk in the light that uh, we are receiving I like us to pray and then uh, be able uh, to carry on from where we left uh, yesterday. Uh, I'd like us to pray, shall we pray as uh, we go into the presentation of today. Heavenly Father, thank you again that uh, this is an opportunity to learn of your word. Now help us not to tackle it deceitfully, but help us to rely on the spirit of thy son. As uh, the bread is changed on the table of shoe bread in the heavenly sanctuary today. We want to partake of the freshness of it, that, Lord, our lips may be touched from the call from the altar. We may speak the truth in a truthful manner. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, um, God is uh, bringing back the messages of uh, 1888 unto his church, unto his movement. And uh, everyone of us better get hold of the message because it is the message that uh, um, will bring in uh, the loud cry. The Lord is showering his church with the dews of the latter rain in preparation for the rain itself, uh, the latter rain, so that the loud cry may go forth in force. And so we are just uh, seeing the glimpse of what the Lord is doing. And today we are in 1888, uh, uh, it is uh, Diagnosis, Analysis and Solution. And in this part D, we are continuing with where we left yesterday with uh, it is message and it is continued uh, uh, opposition. Uh, I'll go ahead and share where we left. And I'm praying that uh, the Lord will uh, bless us in this uh, session. We read... Uh, now we have been getting just uh, a glimmering of faith. We have but a little of it. Yet it is so very hard for the mind that has been looking on the dark shadows and that uh, has been hanging, that uh, has been hanging. Memories hold all through with the disconsolate things and uh, pictures that are dropped in mourning, that it seems as though we cannot look upon anything else. But uh, may God help to gather up the jewels of Christ. This is uh, our prayer even this morning, that uh, God may help to gather up the jewels of um, Christ. God help us that uh, we may hang memories hold all through with the rich promises of God, that when Satan shall come to cast his hellish shadow between us and the source of our strength, we may just be armed. We have got the memorials of all surrounding us, barricaded with the promises, and we can say, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there are uh, shall be no hard in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of uh, my salvation. And that is where we left um, 
uh, yesterday and uh, the continued effort of Saturn to overshadow or uh, eclipse this message of righteousness by faith by bringing in suppositions and bringing in dark clouds in the memories of the people so that they may not dwell on the richness uh, that the Lord has provided through his son Jesus Christ dying and the merits of his blood being applied in our lives so that we may be victorious. And so it is a time that we may cut uh, off these uh, shadows. It's a time that um, we may break every yoke and bonds that uh, has been uh, 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 holding us and the fetters that have tied us to uh, uh, churchianship and uh, being part of uh, a people who are used to debate and uh, oppose everything that is brought unto us. Continued on in the series, uh, uh, we are told that uh, let the law take care of itself. We have been at work on the law until we get as dry as the hills of Gilboa without dew or rain. Let us trust in the merits of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God help us that our eyes may be anointed with eye salve, that we may see God helping us. We will draw nigh to him, and he says he will draw nigh to us. Do we believe? Will we come in God's appointed way? May the Lord help us and enlighten us that we may go forth from this place as they went forth to proclaim the truth after the day of Pentecost. And there were souls converted, they could not resist the testimony. The highest evidence that the Lord is uh, accepting his church is the evidence of uh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit working in the midst of the people for the conversion of souls. The highest uh, 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 clue or the highest, uh, what can I say, evidence that the Lord is amidst the people is not their intellectual uh, uh, understanding of the scriptures, but uh, the reality of the manifestation of the Spirit in their lives to work in power to save those who are in darkness. Yet we think that the greatest manifestation or evidence that the Lord is within us is the understanding of the scriptures and having this intellectual knowledge. But I speak of these men that they may know, that they may understand what is truth, and if they will not hear, if they will keep away, just as the ministers tell the congregations, the stay away argument, don't go to hear. Now, you want to hear everything. If, we ha if he has got error, we want to know it. We want to understand it. Uh, those that are in prominent position, and then we want to investigate for ourselves. We want to know that it is truth, and if it is truth, brethren, those children in the Sabbath school want it, and every soul of them need it. This is what we want. And so, the issue of um, subjecting people to your own kind of interpretation of the scriptures uh, shows a kind of spirit that uh, uh, has kingly rule as uh, men in 1888 uh, could not allow Jonas and Wagner to come on the pulpit and preach and speak to the college students or in the Sabbath schools about the truth on righteousness by faith, thinking that uh, he, they were doing away with the old landmarks when we found yesterday that there was no landmark uh, about the law in Galatians. And uh, what they were doing is having imaginary uh, thoughts on what were the landmarks uh, of um, the Seventh-day Adventism. Uh, the history continues. Those that are in responsible positions, I say you are under obligation to God to know what is going on here. And then everything that is said, right to the law and testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If the light is in them and they have it, why, I beseech you, do not be so full of um, prejudice. Many a times we have found that uh, what has hindered the truth most of the time is uh, the prejudice that is found among the brethren. Because a brethren is having something with the other brethren, then they is filled with prejudice until whatever comes from that brother's mouth is deemed to be false and uh, ultimately being cut off from um, the people because uh, uh, they are held in a, a false light of uh, prejudice. Now I beseech you that you, that uh, I beseech of you that are here today that have cherished sins, whatever they may be, clear it out of the way. God help you to be converted. Oh, I see the smiles of Jesus today. I am so grateful. 
I know that God will help us if we will clear the King's Highway. I hoped, Brother Porter, when you were at Kansas and the Spirit of the Lord came upon you, I hoped you might be in the light, but you are not in the light. Do not be surprised if I, when you are in the darkness, refuse to have an interview with any of you. I have told you over and over again, Christ said, Why do you not hear my words? I will say, Why do you not hear the words of Christ that are presented to you? Why will you have darkness? They are so afraid to see that there is another ray of light. They will build up every conceivable barrier against it. You are working just as the Jewish were. Do not hang on to Brother Smith. In the name of God, I tell you, he is not in the light. He has not been in the light since he was at Minneapolis. You have gathered together, you have built up yourself, and you have tried in every way to resist the Spirit of God. May God have compassion on uh, you are soul. Now, I tell you here before God that the covenant question as it has been presented is the truth. It is the light. In clear line, it has been laid before me. And those that have been resisting the light, I ask you whether they have been working for God or for the devil. It is the clear light of heaven and it means much to us. It means to show us that you cannot depend upon your own smartness and your criticism. But you must hang your helpless soul upon Jesus Christ and upon him alone. God help you to see. God help you to understand. The angels of God will round about us if we will only cling to the right. Wherever Christ is, there are angels. Wherever Christ abides, there are angels to communicate the power and the grace and the glory. I honor my Lord and my Master. I want to carry the banner of truth to the very close of this message. And when the message shall triumph, I want to triumph with it. No more will my lips be sealed. I have been watching to see what course this man will take, how much light will come into their souls. I have been watching to see. I told Brother Dan Jones, I will not tell you my opinion, my faith. Dig in the Bible. Sing the shaft of truth to find out what is truth. But I tell you today, while I have been keeping in silence, the Lord has been revealing night after night the position of individual cases before me. The converting power of God is needed in our midst. He will work through our ministers as he did in Bethlehem. He will shed his light and his glory upon us if we will only give him a chance. But when you begin to talk with them, they will make your words mean something else. The devil is at their side. He is just as much at their side as he was at the side of those men of Nazareth when Christ proclaimed that he was the anointed one. The power of God, the Holy Ghost, the great convictor said it was so, and they said right out it was so. But uh, the devil said, think of this. Why? His mother and his brethren are right here with us. Well, then. Satan followed up the truck, and what next? They were ready to pitch him over the precipice. It is not best to set the feet an inch in the powers of darkness, but God help us right here on this ground to surrender to him. I have borne testimony after testimony, but it has not had any weight. They have rejected everything but their own ideas. May God help you to not close your hearts and minds to this testimony. May God help you to accept and receive it as truth. Um, I, I, I hope that uh, you are seeing the problem that uh, Minneapolis uh, Conference is facing right here. Once uh, people have um, their favorite preachers and their favorite uh, ministers, and they start taking sides, when a subject is brought on forefront, they don't go on their knees to consult God on what is truth, but because their favorite minister has spoken this and that, they would cling to that instead of going to seek the Lord in prayer to know what is truth. The same thing that uh, happened in 1888, you find that uh, it happens to us now and then. Uh, there, 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 there are few people who really examine the scriptures. We have a lot of people reading the Bible. Um, but uh, we have a uh, few people diligently studying the word of God to know what is truth uh, and to stand on their feet on their own instead of leaning upon others for interpretation. And yes, we need preaching, we need uh, teachings, 
but um, the the people who teach and the people who preach will not stand for you in the day of judgment. You need to go to God in prayer and ask, is what I'm hearing the truth or is it false? This is what uh, really was uh, one of the biggest problem with uh, the ministers and the delegates who came into 1888 um, uh, meeting. The prophetess continues, I have testimonies that I have borne to different ones and still shall bear. Notwithstanding your course uh, is directly of a character to say that the testimonies cannot be relied upon. And you said such a man as Larson who has studied infidel books as has Elder Morrison to meet opponents in arguments. Your influence, I have been shown, will be received. Their unbelief confirmed and when God speaks to them in reproof, they will do as you have done, thrown in my face something somebody has said or done or some inconsistently thing they can see in my course which authorizes them to turn from the testimonies to walk as you have done away from all the influence God would bring to bear upon them and plead you as their excuse for doing for so doing. And next you will find the ones whose eyesight spiritually you have acted, you are part to pervert, will accept certain sophistry rather than the pure and alterated truth and they are ensnared and taken. At whose door will their sin be charged? You set their minds against the testimony of the Spirit of God. You led their feet in path in a path where God was not leading you. The spiritual blind has been leading those whom he might have led in a path of faith and um, uh, confidence, uh, 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 peace. Night before last, I was shown that evidence in regard to the covenants were clear and convincing. Yourself, Brother Dan Jones, Brother Porter, and others are spending your investigative powers for not to produce a position on the covenants to vary from the position that Wagon, Brother Wagoner has presented. When you had received the true light which shineth, you will not have imitated or gone over the same manner of uh, interpretation and misconstruing the scriptures as did the Jewish. What made them so zealous? Why did they hang on the words of Christ? Why did spies follow him to mark his word that they could repeat and um, misinterpret and twist in a way to mean that which their own unsanctified minds would make them to mean? In this way, they deceived the people. They made false issues. They handled those things that they could make a means of clouding and uh, misleading the mind. And then she says uh, that I have no brakes to put on now. I stand in perfect freedom, calling light, light, and darkness, darkness. I told them yesterday that the position of the covenants, I believed as presented in my volume one, Patriarchs and Prophets. If that was Dr. Wagner's position, then he had the truth. We hope in uh, God. Uh, really, you will uh, wonder how the leading brethren and the elders of the church uh, could... Um, not comprehend the question of the law in Galatians and the covenants. And uh, it brought much uh, uh, antagonistic uh, differences uh, and uh, issues that uh, should have not arisen. And uh, the churches became so weakly, they became so sickly, and uh, instead of they being fed with the uh, the word of God, they, um, they left the church to languish uh, the way they were languishing in uh, prejudice, debates, and uh, all this stuff. And uh, instead of uh, the Lord now bringing the latter rain to the church, it was withheld. And so, um, What, what happened when uh, Sister White really supported uh, Wangona and Jonas with the Minneapolis uh, uh, messages? When she stood with them, I want you to see what happened because when we start rejecting the light, it will lead to one thing or another. And uh, we just want to continue in this history and see as you continue objecting to the light, what happens next? 1888, page 683, paragraph 3. Dr. Dose told me the conversation that
that went on between Lizzie Lay herself and some of the Sabbath keepers who do not know me. She stated that their family did not place any particular faith now in Sister White's testimony. She said Elder Smith, Elder Butler, Elder Cunwright, and mention other names of the elders did not any longer regard the testimonies as they once did but they considered sister white's work and influence was a thing of the past we had got beyond the need of the testimonies she claimed to know that she had good authority for her statements she said a reproof was given to their family which was not true dr lay heard what his wife and girls said, and he told Sister Dawes not to let their words have any influence upon them. He said he was embarrassed to make the statement that his wife and children were not in a clear spiritual state, and he wished her to understand that he believed every word for the, of uh, the testimonies, and those referring to their family he knew to be true, every word of them. And so, brothers and sisters, you can see the effect of the opposition of the 1888 messages and uh, the support of E.G. White uh, of the message, how it led to those who rejected the message, even reject the testimonies. And here you have the president of the General Conference knowing that there is a prophetess amidst them, that is G.I. Butler. You have the leading brethren like Elder um, Uriah Smith. And you have uh, Elder Kilgo, Elder Canwright, Elder Morrison, um, and uh, Dan Jones, the leading brethren, are uh, now not trusting that uh, the prophetess is still a prophetess, but her testimony are of uh, a past thing. This is what ensues when uh, you reject one part of God's light. If you reject light, then what you are left in is in darkness. The reason why I'm presenting this is so that we may see the spirit that uh, uh, was there in 1888 and ask ourselves that uh, is this happening among us and uh, not only among us but uh, us as individual and as it happens in uh, our lives how many people are being affected by how we view things. Uh, um, I'd like to show you one statement because we think when uh, we sin that it's only us who have sinned that um, go down the line to be the victims of sin. Uh, by G.I. Butler, the president of the General Conference, disbelieving uh, the testimonies, and uh, Elder Smith and others, you find that uh, not only them were uh, overtaken in this thing, but uh, others were made to believe that now Sister White uh, was not a prophetess and her testimony one of the past thing. Look at um, when we sin, it is not us only, but others also are affected by these things. I'm reading from uh, uh, Prophets and Kings, page uh, 94, paragraph 1. Prophets and Kings, page uh, 94, paragraph 1. How sad, how filled with significance the words and all Israel with him. The people whom God has chosen, had chosen to stand as a light to the surrounding nations were turning from their source of strength and seeking to become like the nations about them. As with Solomon, so with uh, Rehoboam, the influence of wrong example led many astray. And as with them, so to a greater or less degree is it today with everyone who gives himself up to work evil. The influence of the wrongdoing is not confined to the doer. No man liveth unto himself, none perish alone in the iniquity. Every life is a light that brightens and cheers the pathway of others, or a dark and desolating influence that tends toward despair and ruin. We lead others either upward to happiness and immortal life, or downward to sorrow and eternal death. And if by our deeds we strengthen or force into activity the evil powers of those around us, we share their sin. And uh, by just uh, the reactions and responses of the leading brethren in Minneapolis, 1888, 
not only were they recorded as sinners, but others also were overtaken and became sinners. We don't live for ourselves, but we live for others. Either we are leading people into light or uh, in darkness. And so you can see how dangerous it is for you to rise against anything that you are not sure of, knowing that you are a person of influence and others may be looking unto you. It will be better for us even to remain silent because sometimes silence is golden than take a position uh, when we know we are of influence and others may be ensnared. Let us be careful with that. In Revelation 13, this subject is plainly presented. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and uh, he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them that dwell there into worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Then the miracle working power is revealed, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which held the wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. All who prove their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a superior Sabbath will run among under the banner of the Lord God Jehovah and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. What need will there be of the solemn warning not to receive the mark of the beast when all the saints of God are sealed and ticketed for the new Jerusalem, or consistently thou at uh, a duel. And so uh, we are seeing that um, in one way or another, by our influence or uh, by our criticism, our prejudice, we may be aligning ourselves with the powers of the Revelation 13, the power of the beast. Now, th that one doesn't click a lot of time in the minds of the people. That uh, in whatever things that they are doing, they are aligning themselves with either the beast or the Lamb of God. You, you could have never imagined that uh, Revelation 13 will come in between uh, uh, the message and its opposition to, be, to, to explain what is really happening in the, uh, in the background of these uh, oppositions. And so men have been aligning themselves with the powers of darkness and it may be without knowing. Because you find that the beast um, uh, uh, puts uh, his seal, his mark on their hands, whatever they find to do. And uh, they, they do it with all their energy and uh, 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 diligence. Every kind of opposition actually is aligning ourselves with the, the beast and his image. And uh, just think about that because uh, we think of only Sunday sacredness uh, as, uh, as the only way of uh, giving support to the image of the beast. Yes, we think that uh, going on church on Sunday is the only way of receiving the mark of the beast. But every opposition to the light is aligning yourself with the beast of Revelation chapter 13. Now that is so, so uh, important to me and I have to be so careful in how I deal with things and how we I deal with the people. Lest I be receiving or preparing to receive the mark of the beast unknowingly. You know, we look at the surface of things when we should look more deeply in what we are doing. I really am examining my life to see really if I'm on the side of the Lord. I don't know what you are doing yourself. But for me, really, as uh, our family, as we have been going through the Bible journey and uh, looking afresh in what we believe and how we react to it, we have found ourselves falling short of the glory of God. Uh, I don't know how you people feel and how you study and what kind of uh, thoughts come into your brains. But uh, I'm really starting to understand the standard of righteousness 
that the Lord would want from us. Think about what Christ says in Matthew chapter 5, that if your righteousness shall not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, be careful, you shall not enter into the kingdom. And these people's righteousness was really a righteousness that could not be compared to any other when you looked at it on face value. And sometimes people look at us and they say, oh, I really, I really desire to be like so and so. I really desire to be like this family and that family. But um, how, do you, how do they look at us? With what kind of lenses do they look at us? It is more than how men look at others. God even looks at the intents and the motives of the heart and goes beyond this face value Christianity and uh, profession of righteousness. If uh, the prophetess can say that uh, any kind of opposition to the light is the same as aligning yourself with the beast of Revelation chapter 13, then I have to be so careful with what I'm doing with my life and my family and uh, the people that surround me. Uh, I don't want to be emotional about this thing, but uh, it really touches me uh, to read such a statements in my life and ask the Lord, truly is uh, the spirit of Minneapolis in my life? And uh, on which side am I on? Am I on the side of the Lamb of God or am I on the side of, of the beast? Sister White continues with the history uh, that... Uh, I decided without an entire change, I will not remain at Battle Creek. It was so much for her, for I will be sharing the sin of those who refused the Spirit of God in correction and warning. I will wear out my life for my breath and have made my work 100-fold harder than was necessary by their unbelief. The unbelief in the message of righteousness by faith as presented by Wagoner and uh, Jonas, and it is supported by Sister White, put the prophetess in a hard line that uh, even those who are unbelievers now had a chance to say, look, she is not a prophetess because she's supporting men who are in error. She continues, I know that Elder Smith and Elder Butler and Morrison and Nicola have been doing a work in their blindness that they will not wish to meet in the judgment. I feel thankful to the Lord I have peace with Jesus Christ. I have the power of his Holy Spirit as I speak to the people at Norwich. The prejudice was swept away from many minds, and I know the Lord gave messages for them, and the testimony of the Spirit of God cut its way through everything like prejudice and unbelief. But the brother so intent on his new life did not come to hear me but uh, at once. Now, you have to carry this uh, word blindness to its logical uh, conclusion. The church had been traveling in Philadelphian love and it was in Philadelphian state, but the Lord would test the church if it was really Philadelphia. Now get me on this. Here we have a church in 1844 which has become Philadelphia. And then the Lord starts bringing in the test to see if this is really the Philadelphian church and a brotherly love church. And uh, he starts giving the messages that are uh, really seems um, uh, not the old landmarks or the old truth that the people know. The message is brought in a, a new light to shine in a new, uh, in a new light. And the Lord will test what kind of spirit really controls these people. What kind of um, uh, uh, manifestation will they have? What kind of response will they have this message? And instead of continuing in uh, Philadelphian love, you find that um, the prophetess says that uh, they have become blind. And uh, the message of blindness only applies to the Laodicean. And so you can start tracing the church drifting from Philadelphian state to Laodicean state in 1880s when uh, brotherly love starts waning away and the light that is coming in is rejected there is opposition and um, there's no belief in the prophet once again and so uh, we wonder how people drift into Laodicean but it is because of this kind of reaction to messages uh, that is not accompanied with brotherly love Look at what she continues to say, and we are in 1888 materials, page 764.9. By the way, let me pause, brothers and sisters, and say this. 
if you haven't read the 1888 material, it's a good time that you read it again. You can uh, go through, um, uh, there is a manuscript and letters volume uh, 5, uh, the year is 1888. I repeat again, manuscript and letters volume 5, the year is 1888 and 1889. And you can also go into the compilation of the book itself, or the manuscript itself, that is the 1888 materials. And so this is what I'm reading from, and uh, if you are following the screen, you can see that um, I put there the, um, the, um, the collection of the material and the original pages. I try to do that a lot, uh, what was surrounding that year and what was happening. He says, there is a lack of moral and spiritual power throughout our conferences. Many churches do not have light in themselves. The members do not give evidence that they are, they are branches of the true vine by bearing much fruit to the glory of God, but appear to be with, withering away. Their Redeemer has withdrawn his light, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit from their prayer assemblies, for they have ceased to represent the self-denial, the sympathy, and compassionate love of the world's Redeemer. They have not love for the souls for whom Christ have died. They have ceased to be true and faithful. It is a sad picture. The feeble piety, the one of consecration and devotion to God. There has been a separation of the soul from God. Many have cut off the commun communication between him and the soul by refusing his messengers and his message. I wanted to see and I wanted to digest and meditate upon these things that we are reading together. And it makes me repeat the quote again. At, at the end of the quotation, she says, there has been a separation of the soul from God. Many have cut off the communication between him and the soul. And what has brought about the condition of things by refusing his messengers and his message. So, be, because of the refusal of uh, the message of righteousness by faith and the messengers, uh, the prophet says very well that uh, there is a lack of moral and spiritual powers throughout our conferences. And many churches do not have light in themselves. And what has caused uh, such a state of condition, of blindness, it is because the messages have been rejected and the delegates which should have taken the messages to the church them themselves they don't believe in the message itself continued on uh, we read that uh, while we dwell upon the paternal character of god and his love expressed for man in the gift of his only begotten son we must tell people why such a costly sacrifice was necessary it was because of sin what is sin the transgression of the law only the son of god could pay the penalty and that by his own humiliation and death as men look at the cross concerns will be aroused they will see the majesty of the law the holiness of god and their own unlikeness to his character they will flee for refuge to jesus christ who can clean them from every stain of sin and adopt them into the royal family, making them sons of God and joined heirs with Jesus Christ. Then will the ones of the prayer he offered to his family, to his father, sorry, be verified. I in them and thou in them that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know what thou hast sent me, that thou hast sent me and hast loved me, hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And so, what was the message of 1888? the uplifting of the Savior and the people beholding their God in his divine attributes and laying the glory of man in dust. But Minneapolis proved to be a meeting where man thought that he could be looked upon and not Christ be looked upon. Reading from uh, Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 92, TM, page uh, 92, just to 
uh, bring you to the update of uh, uh, what uh, these messages were all about. TM page 92 and uh, 93, if uh, I may read that. We start uh, from, uh, that is 90, 91 and 92, sorry. In a short while, I'll have it on the screen. Testimonies to ministers and gospel workers, page uh, 91 and uh, 92. Let us look at uh, what the people had uh, to gain by this message. The Lord, in his great mercy, sent a most precious message to his people through Elders Wagon and Jonas. This message was to bring more prominently before the world the uplifted Savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the wo whole world. It presented justification through faith in the surety. It invited the people to receive the righteousness of Christ, which is made manifest in obedience to all the commandments of God. Many had lost sight of Jesus, and this is what was happening in Minneapolis, that people were looking unto men, and that is why when men rejected the message, those who are looking unto them rejected the message. So the glory of man had to be laid in dust. Men had lost sight of Jesus. They needed to have their eyes directed to his divine person, his merits, and his changeless love for the human family. All power is given into his hands that he may dispense rich gifts to men, imparting the priceless gift of his own righteousness to the helpless human agent. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. It is the third angel's message which is to be proclaimed with a loud voice and attended with the outpouring of his spirit in large measure. The uplifted Savior is to appear in his efficacious work as the Lamb slain, sitting upon the throne to dispense the priceless covenant blessings, the benefits he died to purchase for every soul who should believe on him. John could not express that love in words. It was too deep, too broad. He calls upon the human family to behold it. Christ is pleading for the church in the heavenly courts above, pleading for those for whom he paid the redemption price of his own lifeblood. Centuries, ages can never diminish the efficacy of this atoning sacrifice. The message of the gospel of his grace was to be given to the church in clear and distinct lines that the world should no longer say, the seventh day Adventists talk the law, the law, but do not teach or believe Christ. Again, if I, I can find uh, another statement, uh, this message was to put the glory of man in dust. It was to put uh, the glory of man in, in dust and uh, place Christ in his um, rightful position. And uh, that is what uh, men fear so much, their glory being put to dust and men continuing to look at um, uh, Jesus Christ for their salvation. Some feel relieved after they have stamped down the righteous holy law of Jehovah as one minister described, I feel better after giving the old law a run and after denouncing it as a yoke of bondage. I pronounce it as a bloody old law, dead and buried and undeserving of a grave stone. Is not this the very way Cain felt when he brought a sacrifice to God without the shedding of blood? He was so provoked with Abel that uh, he could not tolerate him because Abel did not accept his reasoning but followed the injunction of God. He mingled with his offering the blood of the victim, representing the efficacious offering, the real person of Christ, as a lamb without blemish, not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. Let not one disclaim against the law of God and let not one rail against the sacrificial offerings. If men were abiding in Christ, if they had a knowledge of his relation to the law, they could not make a raid against the law. Christ himself was the one who devised the system of the Jewish economy. In the symbols and typical sacrifices to represent the great offering that was to be made, he will teach to Adam and Eve and all the human family the lesson that uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no pardon for transgression and uh, sin. Now, you may not understand that slide so much and why it appears there. Um, 
the men had been preaching the law and had become as dry as uh, the hills of Gilboa because they were not preaching Christ in the law. And they were not uplifting Christ and putting him where he is, he should be in the law. And so um, all the people could think was that the Seventh Day Adventists talk only about the law and the law. When Jonas and Wagona came in, they put the law at its right place and Christ at its right place. And when they did that, the old brethren, older brethren thought that uh, they were doing away with the law. They had so preconceived uh, ideas and uh, it made them reject the message because they thought uh, th these brethren were doing away with the law and preaching about grace and grace. But uh, it was the old truth shining in a new light. And that is why uh, I continue saying that uh, let us be careful with what we hold and what we believe, lest we found be rejecting what is light, thinking that we are holding to the old landmark. And so the law had to be put at its rightful place and Christ put at its, uh, uh, his rightful uh, place. We continue, I ask how can I present this matter as it is? The, the issue of righteousness by faith. This is the subject, and we are in 1888 materials, page 1816. The Lord Jesus imparts all the powers, all the grace, all the penitent, all the inclination, all the pardon of sins, in presenting his righteousness for man to grasp by living faith, which is also the gift of God. If you would gather together everything that is good and holy and noble and lovely in man, and then present this subject to the angels of God as acting a part in the salvation of the human soul or in merit, the proposition will be rejected as treason. Standing in the presence of their creator and looking upon the unsurpassed glory which enshrouds his person, they are looking upon the Lamb of God given from the foundation of the world to a life of uh, humiliation, to be rejected of sinful men, to be despised, to be crucified, who can measure the infinity of the sacrifice. We hear so many things preached in regard to the conversion of the soul that are not the truth. Men are educated to think that if a man repents, he shall be pardoned. Supposing that repentance is the way, the door into heaven, that there is a certain assured value in repentance to buy for him forgiveness. Can man repent of himself? No more than he can pardon himself. Tears, sighs, resolution, all these are but the proper exercise of the faculties God has given to man, and the turning from sin in the amendment of a life which is God's. Where is the merit in the man to earn his salvation or to place before God something which is valuable and excellent? Can an offering of money, houses, lands, place yourself on the deserving list? It is impossible. And this is the message that Wagona and uh, John has had, but uh, it seems so elusive. By the way, I have people, I have heard people say uh, that um, how is it that those guys could reject the message? How is it that they could not comprehend the message? But it is funny how such a question is posed because if you go deeply in what is happening today, you will find that the same spirit is working but in a different way, in opposition to the message because it is not presented the way that we think it should be presented. Yes, those guys rejected this message and thought that Wagona and Jonas were bringing in dangerous thing. But um, Satan works in a very subtle way. And unless we have a, a spiritual connection with uh, Christ, you may just find that uh, you are doing the same today, but in a different way. And so let us be careful with that, because sometimes I hear people say, hey, how, how did they come to a point of rejecting such a beautiful messages? Sister White continues in 1888, 818, paragraph 1. Uh, there is danger in regarding justification by faith as placing merit on faith. When you take the righteousness of Christ as a free gift, you are justified freely through the redemption of Christ. Digest that. What is faith? the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is an ascent of the understanding to God's word which binds the heart in willing consecration and service to God. Who gave the understanding? Who moved on the heart? 
who first drew the mind to view Christ on the cross of Calvary, faith in rendering to God the intellectual powers, abandonment of the mind and will to God, and making Christ the only doer to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what is wrong with the brethren in Minneapolis in 1888? They, they did not come to a point of thinking that even the intellectual powers was uh, a result of God working with them. And then he wa can work on others to be able to preach the message in a more clear way than they are. And so they were, make, they were, uh, they were hanging on this uh, issue of uh, trusting in themselves. And uh, that is part of the problem because the message was to lay uh, the glory of man into dust. And they could not comprehend everything because they had been used uh, uh, to, interpret, to do interpretation of some things in uh, uh, their own way, if it were concordance, if it were referring to history, if they were, it was on uh, understanding some particular Bible text, the way they thought they could be understood. And here is Wagona and uh, Jonas, and uh, they are like, we can do nothing without him. And uh, every faculty has to be given to Christ, and then he will be able to empower the church. Uh, with the truth and nothing but um, uh, the truth. And so there is always danger in thinking that uh, uh, we can continue in this state of looking to man and then also be justified. As we come to an end, it is a deplorable fact that men have connected with men, looked up to them, placed them where God should be, regarded their words and works as inspired, the interpretation of scripture inspired and they have become copies of them. Now you, it can help you understand the previous slide that um, uh, says it is an ascent of the understanding to God's words which binds the heart in willing consecration in service to God, who gave the understanding, who moved on the heart, who first drew the mind to view Christ on the cross of Calvary. Faith is rendering to God the intellectual powers abandonment of the mind and will to God and making Christ the only doer to enter into the kingdom of God. And this is what they could not do, abandoning their mind to the will of God to direct the affairs of Minneapolis 1888. And so we continue. It is a deplorable fact that men have connected with men, looked up to them, placed them where God should be, regarded their wants and works as inspired, their interpretation of scripture inspired, and they have become copies of men. They are dwarfed in their religious experience. They do not lead out. They are letting other men be brains for them, letting another man search the scriptures for them and accepting his decisions as authority. And yet that man whom they depend on and trust in is compassed with the same human infirmities and weaknesses and his defects really are regarded to be virtues to be copied. The Lord wants ministers of the gospel to search the scriptures. Make no living man a channel. Accept not the work he does as without a flaw. Do not let him do the work God has told you to do. If you do, how are you occupying a safe position? Jesus bids you come to him, the great teacher, and learn of him, and you should find rest to your souls. Let no man stand between your soul and Jesus Christ, thinking that the Lord tells him that which he refuses to tell you. Give God a chance, ministering brethren, to operate on your mind. Peace, place yourself, so replace yourself before him as one who wants to learn of him. You must place yourself before the Lord, indulgently searching his word, that he may communicate ideas to you. He does not design that you shall be dependent on human minds. He will have you look to him in faith to do, a large, to do large things for you, not through another man, but to you. Now, this is not uh, something that people would want to hear. And this is uh, the anchor point. The message of 1888 was refused by the delegates because they had accustomed themselves to looking at men. You can now start understanding the message of justification by faith and righteousness by faith how in its different facets is rejected. We only think righteousness by faith um, as a message of uh, looking unto Christ uh, or believing in the righteous and righteousness of Christ and the merits of his blood. But the message is so broader 
that when a minute, when all things are brought in you find that uh, w the things you have never thought of affecting the message of righteousness by faith it is really affecting that message in why, when, one way or another and so my prayer uh, for myself and uh, uh, and for you is this what has the Lord been speaking to your conscience directly what has God been revealing to you as a person as you study this message and any other message in Adventism does it hang upon the interpretation of men and relying upon sources that you think they are inspired have you come to put men in the place of the Holy Spirit or have you come to that point that you will not hear that person and that person because your favorite speaker or preacher says this and this. These are the different facets of uh, the message of righteousness by faith and justification by faith. Because the whole issue is um, putting the glory of man in dust and uh, looking at the divine person of Jesus Christ so that he may dispense with the rich gifts. All power is given unto me uh, in heaven and on earth that he may dispense with these rich gifts to all men, not just to a few men and make them stand on the pulpit and order people to do what they think is uh, the right thing to do. May the Lord of heaven uh, give us another way to view things the way we view them and uh, help us to understand what he's speaking to his church in such a time as this shall we uh, pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for as uh, the rain falleth on the ground and uh, it produces its desire, desired results. So the word that has gone out of your mouth shall not return void. It may seem a difficult thing to understand the things we are speaking about, but by the Spirit, Lord, you make things which are difficult so simple. What is impossible for men, it is possible for thee. My language may not articulate the things in the right way, or uh, may I bring to an understanding the Minneapolis uh, uh, conference to the minutest point that a child can understand but uh, I know thy spirit can um, really simplify these things and even the message itself so that it may be accepted and proclaimed. Your glory may shine upon us and uh, your will may be effected in our lives with power and with manifestation of uh, divinely origin. I'm praying for a revival in your church, in your movement I'm praying for a reconsecration unto thee once again. This is my plea, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.